Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through a React slash Vite project that uses CSS modules. And before I continue, I want to apologize for the bad audio. I'm moving house and my microphone is currently packed up in storage somewhere. So I'm using the microphone that comes with my headphones. Now, if you have a bit of experience with CSS modules and Webpack, you'd know that to use CSS modules with Webpack, you'd have to change some configuration settings. But with Vite, you don't have to change anything. In fact, if I open up my Vite config file, there's nothing in here that talks about using CSS modules. All you have to do is make sure that you've named your CSS files .module.css. That's it, and Vite will take care of the rest. As you can see, I have a file here that uses some CSS modules. They have to be .module.css. And even though my VS Code can't read some of the syntax, you'll see I'm able to use this fine in Vite. And if I were to open up a terminal, and run the project, everything works fine and there are no issues with styling. And as you can see, the CSS module classes are showing up as expected. Now, I was originally going to stop the video here, but I've messed about with some more config stuff in Vite that can make CSS modules a bit more easier to use. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to Vite config. And what I'm gonna do before I write any code is show you the Vite website that tells you how to use CSS modules. So here, it's a bit cryptic. It doesn't really reveal much to you. And if you want to know more about CSS modules, it actually uses a plugin called Post CSS Modules that will give you a bit more information about how the Vite config works. But we won't dwell on this too much. Just want to show you that it's here in case you need it. So what we're going to do is going to use the locals convention, and I'll put that in the Vite config now. So what this will do is it will allow you to use camel case in your file that you reference your CSS class in. So as you can see in this login file, I've got login CSS and square brackets or parentheses, and I've got the left column in there. So what I can do is I can use camel case. So I can do this, which is a lot easier on the eye and everything should work fine. So if I go back to the browser and look at the code, everything works fine. The classes are being called and used correctly. So what we can do as well is these class names are fine for debugging. So I can see container, I can see this dash F. And if I wanted to have them a bit smaller, a bit more condensed for production, I can do that as well. But that involves a bit more with the V code. As you can see here, there's generate scoped name, which can be used to generate the name of the CSS class that we want to show. And you can see what kind of options this has over here. So if I do search for that, you can see it can return a string as expected here. Or you can have this function, which takes name, file name, CSS, which looks like this. We are not going to use this. We're just going to use this bit. So if I copy this over here and paste that in the Vite config, save, and then go back to the browser, you'll see that the names are a bit longer. Actually, they're much longer. And that's OK. So that shows that's working. Ideally, I'd want to use the default one, but I don't know what that is. So I'll leave this like this for now. This kind of way works for me for development. So left column dash dash. Yeah, that works for me. I don't like double dashes, so I get rid of one or two. And there we have it. So this way, I'd say works for me development wise. So I can have the specificity with the hash at the end of it. So the two hashes um, here, seven I, whatever, and I can have the class name. So that's perfect. These ones that don't have any hashes, they're globals. So they won't have any hashes ever in the production one. So now if I wanted to differentiate between development and production to have different hashes, what I can do is change the way this whole config works by turning it into a function and returning this define. So I'll do that and change the formatting with prettier. And there we have it. So what the Vite config passes in as an argument is something called mode and command. So I'm going to put that here and that would be something that I haven't done. So Vite config input, I haven't made that yet. So I'll do that now. And that takes in um, mode, which is a string and command, which is also a string. Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly what these do. I know mode decides if it's in production or development, and command also decides what kind of server is being used. I think if I go into the Vite documentation, so here you can see command and mode, and here it gives you more information about mode. This is what we're going to use. So mode is a string, either be development or production, but you can add your own custom mode if you write dash dash mode and then do something like test or um, staging. So we're going to make use of mode by doing this. Say we want to create a constant variable. 
and we'll say if args dot mode is equal to production, then what we're going to do is have this return the string. But we're going to change it a bit to move to local. So we'll just have the hash. And then if it's development, we'll use that. Cool. And then we can get rid of this. Okay. Now let's check if that works. So we'll go back to our browser. And I think development is working as expected. We've got the local left dash column dash form. And we've got the hash, which is 7i. So that's working as expected. Let's try production. To do that, we'll kill the dev server. And we'll run build. So npm run build. And then after that, we'll run preview. But I'll do this one first. So I'll, once it's building, I'll explain what it's doing. So if you go into our code and go to the package JSON file, you'll see the scripts that are available are dev build preview. Now what beat build is going to do is build the site for production. And what preview is going to do is create a server that we can use to view our production site. So going back into the terminal, I can run npm run preview. So that should be running our production site. And if I click on this link, this is the site in production. And if we check the names of the CSS classes, you'll see that we just have underscore 7i. So in development mode, we have the local name and the hash. And in production, we just have the hash. So as you can see here, we've got SV, CF, TM, 71 or 7i. And this one has got the name in front of it as well. If it will let me do it, here we go. SV, CF, TM, whatever. So this is perfect. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give this video a like. And if you have any comments about what I've done, then please feel free to ask them in the section below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.